I'm Aaron Berger. I'm a University of Nebraska Extension Educator located in the South Panhandle of Nebraska. And today I'd like to talk about cat appreciation, which is a hidden but significant non-cash expense to the cow-calf enterprises. Cat appreciation frequently is the second largest expense to the cow-calf enterprise after feed. How do we calculate depreciation? Well, depreciation is purchase price of a bred female or her replacement cost if we're keeping replacement heifers and developing them ourselves, minus our estimated salvage value for when that heifer is going to leave the herd, divided by the number of productive years she's in the herd. The following is an example of depreciation. Let's say, for example, we purchase a bred two year old heifer for $2,750. She's estimated to have an average cold cow value of $1,500 when she leaves the herd. The depreciation on that bred female without any death loss included is $1,250 per head. If a 2% death loss is included, we're going to assume an average cow value of $2,000. If that female is in the herd for five years, she's going to have $290 of depreciation per year. If she's in the herd for four years, she's going to have $353 of depreciation per year. And if she's in the herd for three years, she's going to have $457 of depreciation per year. A significant expense. How long is a cow in the herd on average? Let's assume a 16% bred heifer replacement rate for a 100 cow year. This graph from Dr. Chris Ringwall at North Dakota State University illustrates what we'd expect to find in terms age groups of cows distributed from two-year-olds after 13-year-olds in our 100 cow herd. You can see that on average most cows are six years old and under. We typically think about nine, 10, and 11-year-old cows as those that we have seen in the herd, but those on average really are a rarity. Most of our cows are going to be six years old and under. If we have a 16% replacement rate, a cow on average is going to wean somewhere between four and a half to five calves before she leaves the herd. Thus, we have an average cow age that's somewhere around five and a half years. There are three ways to decrease depreciation expense to the cow herd. First, by reducing the initial cost, either developed replacement heifers or purchased bred females. Second, by increasing salvage value of cows leaving the herd. And third, by increasing the number of years the cow is productive in the herd thus effectively reducing the replacement rate. Let's first talk about reducing initial cost. I think utilizing a systems approach to replacement heifer development is the best strategy to reducing replacement heifer development cost. There's a UNMED guide titled Reducing Replacement Heifer Development Costs Using a Systems Approach that outlines this kind of development system. I also think producers should enterprise replacement heifer development expense so they have a good handle on what those costs are. Putting a value on that heifer at weaning and then tracking all expenses including feed, breeding and development costs, labor, any equipment that's also involved in that replacement heifer development enterprise from the time of weaning till that time when that bred heifer enters the herd is the only way to get a true picture of what these replacement heifer actually cost. Another thing I think we need to challenge ourselves with, especially as we think about enterprising replacement heifer development, is open heifers can be profitable. Frequently, we're focused on maximizing the number of heifers to get pregnant in a replacement heifer development enterprise. And I think in many cases, this is the wrong approach. If we're trying to find those heifers that are most fit to our environment, most fit to our resources, I think we should consider challenging our replacement heifers somewhat during that development phase exposing them for a short period of time to breeding or AI, and then selecting those that fit that development system, which also hopefully will fit our management and our resources. Another option I think that cow-calf producers should consider to reduce the initial cost as they think about cow depreciation is evaluating the purchase of older bred females. Sometimes older bred females, such as three-year-olds or four-year-olds, can be purchased for similar expense to a bred heifer. These older females sometimes can be a good opportunity to reduce depreciation expense as they've already passed that point when there's a higher level of fallout from a young cow in terms of reproductive rate. Also, we can often use terminal bulls on these older bred females, increasing 
affecting the pounds of calf produced per cow exposed. Also, for many cow-calf producers, the labor and management involved with developing replacement heifers and then calving them as two-year-olds is significant. Buying older bred females removes some of those management challenges. Another thing I think we need to understand in reducing cost for cows entering the herd is that there historically have been market cycles for bred heifers and cows. And we've seen cow prices go up and cow prices go down depending upon supply and demand and what's going on in the market also from a weather events such as drought or other things that happen. Understanding this can give us some understanding of where we are currently in our market prices. Now we've seen significant increase in calf prices, feeder cattle and fat cattle over the last 18 months or so, which has also translated into excellent bred cow and bred female prices. That having been said, we need to understand that while things go up, they also go down and that the prices we pay for those heifers today might be a good deal if they continue to go up or they might not should the market continue to go down. Understanding market cyclicity and trying to buy females uh, during periods when they're priced lower and then maybe replacing fewer in times when they're higher can help us reduce depreciation expense. Another option to reduce depreciation expense is one called dollar cost averaging. Let's say for example I have a 100 cow herd and I'm going to plan to replace somewhere around 15 of those each year. Let's say on average I think I should be able to buy a bred female for $2,000. So I allocate $30,000 per year just purchasing bred heifers. Some years I'm going to be able to buy more than 15 bred heifers for that $30,000. And other years, like this year, I'm going to be able to buy less. What that does is it allows me to purchase more bred heifers when they're cheaper, uh, buy fewer when they're more expensive, thus reducing depreciation expense as I'm buying uh, fewer bred heifers when things are higher priced. Another opportunity to increase or reduce depreciation expense is to increase salage value. We can do this through a long breeding season and a short calving season. With a long breeding season and a short calving season, it seems contradictory, but what we're doing is using pregnancy diagnosis through either palpation or ultrasound to identify those cows that are going to calve early and fit our calving season and then sell all those later bred cows to someone else who maybe they fit their calving season. I think we also can increase salvage value by understanding market seasonality for cold cows. Typically cold cow prices bottom out somewhere in the late fall and into early winter. From then on they tend to increase as we move through the winter into early spring. By understanding market seasonality, we can try to strategically market cold cows when historically throughout the year they've had higher prices. Another way we can increase salvage value is by feeding thin cows that we're going to market. Thin cows that we can move up a market class, especially for non-pregnant cows that we're going to be selling into a cold cow market, can really increase the value of the pounds we sell thus decreasing depreciation. The third opportunity we had to decrease depreciation is through increasing the number of productive years that that cow is in the herd. We can do this by selecting replacement heifers and females that fit our feed resources and environment. And we've already talked about that somewhat. Another thing I think we need to pay attention to if we're commercial cow-calf producers is not to overlook hybrid vigor. Crossbred cows consistently are going to produce more pounds of calf wean per cow exposed than their straight bred counterparts when in the same environment with the same management uh, resources. Hybrid vigor should not be overlooked and should be utilized by commercial cow-calf producers who are looking for ways to decrease cow depreciation. Another opportunity to increase the number of productive years that a cow is in the herd is to select bred heifers that are going to calve early in the calving season. When those heifers calve early in the calving season, they're more likely to stay in the herd as they're going to have a longer opportunity or longer postpartum interval between when they calve and when they need to rebreed, that they're going to stay in the herd. This just increases the likelihood that they're going to get pregnant and return for subsequent calving seasons and when they get pregnant early in the calving season. Finally, I think there's an opportunity to strategically manage both young and old cows that are at greater risk for reproductive failure 
especially from calving season through early to mid in the breeding season. This typically is when young cows or older cows are challenged, especially if feed resources are inadequate to meet nutrient requirements. And since strategic supplementation, especially right prior to and through the breeding season, can help these younger and older cows go ahead and breed, thus reducing the number that fall out. In summary, cat appreciation is a significant non-cat expense and frequently the second largest expense to the cow-calf enterprise. By addressing depreciation in three areas, either through initial costs, increasing salvage value, or increasing number of years that a cow is productively in the herd, we can reduce this depreciation expense.